FM 88 WPAR now presents the Good Fight broadcast with the evangelist Tony Van Hooser. Good evening. Welcome to the Good Fight program. Next week, millions of people all over the world are going to gather around a tree and exchange gifts. And uh, very few of them are going to stop long enough to think about the significance of the day that they're celebrating. But many, many gifts are going to be given. Uh, some gifts are going to be uh, appreciated, while others are not. Some are going to cause people to cry, while others may cause people to laugh. Uh, some are going to be kept for years and years, not so much because of what they are, but because of who gave it. On the other hand, some gifts are going to be taken back the next day to be exchanged for something better or for some cold, hard cash. Some gifts are going to be given from the heart, while others are not. Some will be given out of love, while others may be given out of obligation. Some will be given, uh, some of the gifts that are going to be given are going to be things that people have created and made with their own hands and took a long time to create, while others are going to be bought the last minute on sale at Walmart. But this evening, I want to talk about the greatest gift that's ever been given. The greatest gift that's ever been given. You say, what is that? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The greatest gift that's ever been given is eternal life. It's the greatest gift that's ever been given. Number one, because of what it is, eternal life. That means to live forever. Do you know that man has a basic desire to live forever? The most basic desire for man is to live as long as he can. But man realizes early in his life that on his own, he will not live forever. And he's not willing to accept the gift of eternal life from God many times because he's too proud. So what does he do? He goes around satisfying his flesh and most depraved desires because he knows that one day it's all going to be over with. But God never intended for it to be over with. When God created man, he created him to live forever. And some people think that when God made man, he made him so he would only live for 70 or 80 years and only dream of having eternal life. But that's not true. When God created man, he created him with the purpose of living forever and ever. But God, gave, he, when he created him, he gave man a choice. And some people think that God tested Adam and Eve. He didn't test them. He gave them a choice. You see, God knew that there was something out there in the universe that was wicked, that was evil personified, that was the devil who left heaven because he wanted to be a god and wanted to be worshipped. So when God created man, he, he created him with a choice. He told Adam, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So man had a choice. He could eat of all of the trees of the garden. But if he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would pay for it with his life. That's why the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But Adam and Eve made the wrong choice. And so God had to make a way for man to get back what he lost eternal life. That brings me to my next point. Eternal life is the greatest gift that's ever been given because of who it came from. You know that next week some gifts are going to be given that are going to be, they're going to mean a whole lot more than others only because of who they came from. Well this gift is the greatest gift that's ever been given because of who it came from. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 17 that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, variableness and neither shadow of turning. There are many gifts that come from God. And I believe that God loves to give gifts to people. But many times we just won't let him. And that person that created the world, the universe, and every star that you see in the sky wants to give to you eternal life. 
so you can live forever? Are you going to refuse God the satisfaction of giving you the gift that he has to offer? If there ever was a person that I'd want, I'd want to receive a gift from, it would be God. God wants to give you something. That thing is eternal life. This gift is not only great because of what it is. It's not only great because of who it's from. It's great because of who it's given to. Children all the time at Christmas get under the tree and they uh, go looking through the packages. And they'll pick them up and they'll look at them and they'll lay them down. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for that package that has their name on it. And usually if it don't have their name on it, they won't waste their time with it. But if it has their name on it, they'll pick it up and shake it and check it out and see how much it weighs and measure it and feel around and see what shape it is. And before they get through, nine times out of ten, they'll know exactly what it is before they open it. But I'm talking about a gift that has written on it from God to whosoever will. I'm talking about a gift that's given to any and all. I'm talking about a gift that's given to white, to the people that are white, black, young, old, men, women, children, grandparents, Methodists, Catholics, Baptists, Democrats, Republicans, any and all. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's gift is for everybody, everywhere. It isn't just for the elect. There's a bunch of people called that hyper-Calvinists that teach that salvation is only for the elect. No, salvation is for everybody. God wants everyone to have eternal life, not just a chosen few. If you're listening to this broadcast tonight, God wants to give to you eternal life. You say, but I, I did this or I did that. That doesn't matter. God wants to give to you eternal life. One of the last things that uh, was written in the Bible was written by John the Apostle in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. It says, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This gift is given to all. It's given to all men, and every man, everybody in the world today can be a partaker of this gift. This is the greatest gift that's ever been given because it will satisfy you. <clears throat> it will satisfy you. I remember when I was a kid, it didn't matter if I got exactly what I wanted for Christmas. I was never satisfied. I was always wanting something more. I'd always compare what I got to what my friends got. And I'd gripe and I'd, I'd complain that I didn't get this or I didn't get that. You say, well, what was wrong with you? Well, I was a spoiled brat, just like some of you. Now I realize that just being able to get up in the morning is enough to shout about. But listen, all the gifts that we give down here in this world and all the gifts that we get down here will never really satisfy us. That's why that next year at Christmas, if we're still here and we're still able, we're going to give gifts and, and receive gifts. You know why? Because the ones that we get this year will not be sufficient to satisfy us for the rest of our lives. But I'm talking about a gift that if you ever receive, you will be satisfied for eternity. You see, you have, you have a longing in your soul to get back what Adam and Eve lost in the garden, which is eternal life. And nothing else that you can ever get in this world can or ever will satisfy that longing except for God's gift of eternal life. It's the greatest gift that's ever been given because of what it cost. You know, many times down here in this world, we'll judge the worth of a gift that we receive by how much it costs. 
And many times we shouldn't do that. It's childish. Uh, listen, if you get a gift next week, don't go around judging it by how much was spent on it. Uh, someone said it doesn't matter how much it cost as long as it came from the heart, which is true. But at the same time, uh, don't be a cheapskate and go out and get a penny and put a bow on it and say, well, at least I thought of you. Don't do that. But uh, I'm talking about a gift that was not only given out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible says that God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It was not only given out of love and from the heart of God. It cost him the ultimate price. How many people out there would uh, have has a friend or somebody that they love, that they want to get something for, for Christmas. But in order to get it, you have to allow your only son or daughter to die. It can't be bought with money. No amount of money could ever pay for it. It could only be paid for by the death of your only child. But God, the Bible teaches that God, not he didn't allow his son to die for his friends he allowed his son he gave the ultimate paid the ultimate price to buy the gift not for his friends but for his enemies the bible says in romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 and verse 6 for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, for if when we were, we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. God paid the price for the gift of eternal life by allowing his son to die for his enemies. This is the greatest gift that's ever been given because it's free. It's free. You know a gift is not a gift if you expect something in return. Next week when you go to give a gift to somebody, if you want something, if you want to truly give a gift don't expect anything in return. If you're giving something to somebody and expecting something in return, then you're not giving a gift. You're just trading things. And you know that God doesn't expect anything in return for the gift that he's offering you. People say, if I get saved, I have to give this up or you have to give that up. Hey, if you get saved, you'll get to give that stuff up. All that stuff that you uh, uh, don't want to give up is just taking you to the grave or it's messing your life up altogether anyway. If you get saved, you'll get to give that stuff up because God will give you the strength and power to. But listen, if we're saved, we ought to give God our hearts. We ought to give God our lives and our minds and our money and our time and anything and everything that we have. But uh, listen, listen, there ain't nothing that we can do, nothing, nothing we can say, nothing that we can uh, be, no amount of work that can, uh, we can do that it will ever pay, be enough to pay for this gift that God has to offer to man. It's free. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17, that whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. 
For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is by many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by uh, one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life, by Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why it, I believe that it grieves the heart of God when people talk about losing their salvation. Listen, if it's free, there ain't no amount of work that you can do to get it. And there ain't no amount of work that you can do to keep it. And besides, eternal life means just by the definition of the word that it's eternal. You can't lose something that you have for eternity. You say, well, then how do I receive this gift? If I can't work for it, then how do I get it? Well, just like on Christmas morning, people will go, to, go downstairs to the living room and reach under the tree and pick up a gift and open it up. You have to go to the tree that God put up to receive this gift. And this tree is called Calvary. Calvary. The Bible says about Jesus in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Everybody at Christmas time puts up lights on the Christmas tree. Well, Calvary is the tree that the light of the world hung on. In order to receive this gift, you go to that tree and accept the work that he did there to pay for your sins. And trust Him. And ask Him to save you. And you can have eternal life. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 15. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. But have eternal life. The Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us. Even eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verses 11 through 13. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. There are several things that go along with this gift. Forgiveness of sins. Joy, indwelling of the Holy Ghost, mansions in heaven, fellowship with God, fellowship with the children of God, strength and power to serve God. It's the greatest gift that's ever been given. And I hope and pray that you will receive this gift before it's everlasting too late. God bless you and good day. Tell me who's gonna buy and who's giving me 
You've been listening to the Good Fight broadcast with the evangelist Tony Van Hooser. The mailing address, Post Office Box 1311, Newton, North Carolina, 28658. Listen every Saturday evening from 7.30 until 7.50 for the Good Fight broadcast here on FM 88 WPAR. Mention our call letters when you write. We'll